Hello and happy Wisdom Wednesday. Thank you so much for choosing to spend some of your day with me. My name is Maria Milagros and today we're going to talk about how life is a journey. And I don't just want to talk about the cliche like life is a journey. I want to actually talk about and unpack some of the things that will help you create a life, a journey, an adventure that is more fun, more fulfilling, and more filled with love. Um, for those of you who get my monthly newsletter, you'll recognize that this is to complement, this video is going to complement that newsletter. Letter. If you don't already get my newsletter, please get on over to my website when the video is over, www.mariamilagros.net, and you can sign up for the newsletter. You'll get once a month a newsletter that just has a little blurb, and then it has seven either tips, techniques, or reminders to help you create the kind of life that you really should be living, the kind of life that God intended for all of us a life with freedom and fun and love. So um, that you're going to get that once a month. And then every Wednesday, you'll get a weekly Wednesday video, these Wisdom Wednesday videos, and any updates or anything that's coming up so that you're aware before anybody else. Okay, so let's talk about how life is this amazing adventure. And we have a tendency as people to miss out on it because we're either creating expectations about what it's supposed to look like or how it's supposed to be laid out. We're holding on to stories that either we created or someone else created and we took on, or we're um, carrying around excess baggage. So we're gonna talk about those three things. I wanna unpack each of those just a little bit today. So the first one, please understand that it is good to have a goal and to have plans. The Bible says to write your plans or write your vision and make it plain. So we know that that's a good thing. It doesn't say, to write it exactly every detail how you think it's supposed to map itself out. Because when we do that and we create all these expectations on how it's supposed to be mapped out, we miss out on the opportunities, on the blessings, on the wonder, on the adventure that is our lives. Because we walk around like this thinking there's only one pathway by which that thing can be achieved. And that is not real. Because each person has their own experiences, we're coming with our own stuff, our own gifts, our own talents. And so if you walk around like this and you're following someone else's step-by-step -step plan, and that may work for some people, but for most people it doesn't. Because we're all unique beings on our own unique journeys, having our own unique plans laid out, right? I love this anonymous quote that I read, and it says, make your plans in pencil, give God the pen. Love that. So I want to think about it as simple as saying something like, today I'm going to have an amazing day. A lot of times people will say that and then define what amazing is, create all these expectations to attach to the word amazing, and then at the end of the day, they're disappointed and they're frustrated because their day was not amazing. Well, it wasn't amazing because of your perspective, not because it wasn't amazing. Sometimes amazing could be sitting around all day, watching marathons of television, eating chocolate, because that's where you, that's what you needed. Some days amazing could be creating a to-do list and just knocking everything off your list and being super productive. Some days amazing could be having a struggle and a real challenge and then getting to a place where either something shifts and you recognize, oh, I just grew in this moment or I just took a step that I didn't think I would take or this was really scary and I moved anyways. And when we allow ourselves to, that's amazing. Spending time, quality time with friends and family, amazing. Spending a great day just hanging out with the kids at the park, amazing. So it can, it can be amazing every day because every day it brings its own unique stuff. So long as we stop creating expectations and defining what amazing is. We have to keep ourselves open to opportunities, blessings, wonder, and adventure. So that's my nugget for you for that one, is release the expectations so that you can increase the appreciation of what the day brings, of what the plan is, of how to achieve the goal. And then you're gonna find that you're living a more fun and fulfilled life because you're not stressing out that it's not following the plan exactly, right? So the second thing I wanna talk about is holding on to either stories that you've created or that someone else created and you've taken on for yourself. Now, a lot of people that I know say, I was hoping by the time I turned this age, blah, 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 would be done. X, Y, and Z. And when you live like that, and you live in a place where you're waiting for X, Y, and Z, you miss out on A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, you get it, right? You miss out on all that because you're saying... It had to look like this, and it doesn't. So now I'm disappointed, and I'm frustrated, and my life is blah, and blah, right? Now, I'm telling you from experience, when I turned 30, I had a good week 
of like a crisis in my brain. Because in my head, I said, by the time I'm 30, I had a plan. I had a story for myself. I said, by the time I'm 30, this is what's going to make me happy. I'm going to be married. I'm going to have 2.5 kids. I'm going to have a house with a picket fence. I'm going to have a German Shepherd. I'm going to have a Mercedes. I'm going to be the CEO of my own company, blah, 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 by the time I'm 30, right? Like, And then 30 came, and I was divorced with one child, living in an apartment, driving my Toyota Corolla, no dog, right? <laughs> and then it was... I had this moment where I really had to go through these this gratitude shift and say, no, you don't have a Mercedes, but you have a Toyota Corolla and it's paid off and it's yours and it's gold, right? And no, you don't, you're divorced, but and you're not married right now, but being divorced doesn't mean that the relationship wasn't successful. I have this amazing daughter and we both recognize that it wasn't a healthy place to be. Bonus. Um, no, I don't have 2.5 kids, but I have this amazing child that I get to pour all of myself into and I get to raise and I get to love on. I don't have a dog, but I don't really want to walk an animal three, four times a day. I don't really want to have to take them to a dog park. I don't want to clean up their poop. That's the truth. So sometimes we hold on to these stories that we created for ourselves in our lives. And when we do that, again, we're living like this on our journey and we're not allowing ourselves to see one, how amazing our life already is. And two, to really recognize that some of the things we thought we wanted or that other people told us we needed, we don't really want right now in this moment. I love my apartment. I love my apartment. This is this is my home. I love this place. I love my car. It gets me everywhere I need to go, and it's so cheap on gas. I can fill up on gas and it's such a little money. I love my daughter. I love my pets, my fur baby, right? Like, I'm so in love with my life right now, and it didn't look like what I thought it needed to look like in order for me to love it. And that only happened when I really made that shift towards gratitude and love. That really happened when I let go of those old stories that other people said, by now you need to be married. By now, Whenever I meet a woman and she asks me how come I'm not married or why I'm not having more kids, I, I feel bad. Because I go, is that what you think makes me a valuable human? That, that's the only way that I can provide value to the planet is if I have a ring on a certain finger or if I have a certain amount of children? Like... Don't let your life dreams dictate whether or not you can see other people's life dreams. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and then I realized that there were some things that I just didn't want right now. One day I'll have the German Shepherd. I'm going to have a big old house and more time. Right now I don't have that. So we have to let go of some of those old stories because they just hinder us from really being able to enjoy fully our lives and to live from a place of love and gratitude and to stay true to ourselves. Like, do I really want that or is that something that my mom told me I needed to have in order to be happy by the time I'm 30, right? Just saying. Um, and then the third thing is releasing excess baggage. This is so important. When we came back from a trip, um, I had an extra suitcase that I had to buy to fill it up with stuff for all my people, like little gifts and souvenirs. And when we got to the airport, the woman said, this is extra. And so because it's extra, you have to pay an extra fee. And I thought, I already bought the presents, I bought the suitcase, and now i got to pay another fee? Fine, I'll do it. So I pay the fee, I get home, and I'm able to disperse all the gifts, and then I no longer have to worry about that suitcase or that thing or any of that, right? The baggage is gone. This is not that different from the emotional, mental, and spiritual baggage that we carry. First of all, you want to think about when you're carrying a lot of baggage on your journey, you're weighed down, you're crushed down, you're not able to move as freely, as easily as you want. Removing the excess, the excess baggage will allow you to be more free and move more like how you want to live in freedom. The other thing is, I was able to pay that fee one time. And then once I got home, I got rid of all that stuff. If you are carrying excess baggage every time you move to a new job or a new relationship or a new event or a new moment in your life, you have to pay that fee all over again. And not necessarily in cash, but you're paying that fee because you're carrying that stuff and it's weighing you down and it's costing you. It is costing you. So my suggestion is to get rid of it. And the way we do that, counseling, therapy, um, group, group work that you do, having a friend that you can talk to, prayer, you know, um, ministry, counseling, pastoral care, whatever it is, figure out what the best means is for you and then go start dealing with your stuff so that you can remove the excess baggage and start living the life that you're really intended to live. Now, it is time to do the hard heart work, right? You have to face your past. You have to deal with your past. 
I don't care how slow you unpack. I don't care if you unpack one item at a time and then figure out where to get rid of it and how to put it away. Just start unpacking because on the journey of life, you're meant to live this life of freedom, this life of fulfillment, this life of fun, this life of love. You really are. So here's my question to you. What will you begin doing that will help you make your life's journey more fulfilling, more fun, or more filled with love? Or what have you already begun doing? Share. Put it in the comments below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you know someone who could benefit from this, please share it because sharing is encouraged and I want to try to get to as many people and encourage as many people as possible. And if you haven't already, subscribed to my channel so you get one of these videos every week. So that's it. I'm going to leave you right there. Well, that's a lot to chew on. And I hope you have a great rest of your weekend. I hope, I mean, your week. I hope your journey is amazing and fantastical and super sparkly. And I hope that you have an incredible weekend. Peace. Love you.